like the Robot Chicken Star Wars. Um, we're, we're pretty much going to uh, keep it very simple and uh, open it up straight to questions because it's easier for us that way. You guys are sitting so far away. What's up, Australia? See, right when we walked on stage, I asked Tom to do that. He's like, that'll never work. And I was like, it always works. You want to try it? What's up, Australia? It does work. No, you need even more conviction. Like, it's important to really go for it. Matt, show them how it's done. What's up, Australia? Conviction, that's the key. You guys want to open up to uh, questions and uh, yeah, we'll just see what it is. Uh, we want to do this. Yeah. So we're going we're to line up uh, behind the gentleman with the microphone. Who's first? Who's first? Wait, you have to speak up so we can hear you over the wrestling. Why Star Wars? Why Star Wars? Why not Star Wars? For those cosplayers that you know what? Oh, wait, 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 Um, I mean, really, is there... Kevin Simiano. Yeah. Anna Wines. That's me. Group K.O. Uh-huh. She Tenshi. Okay, I'll let her know. Lauren Myers. Uh-huh, one more. Gotham Nation. Wait, oh, okay, East one more. East meets West. Erin <laughs> Hutchinson.
and it's so scary just because your imagination is, is more vivid than anything that anybody can put on film. So there's something funny about uh, naked puppets having their genitalia blurred out. It's like we've lost our minds. It's not real genitalia. Uh, usually there's nothing there to begin with. So it's, it is, it's almost funnier to blur it. Well, I, I, actually I can't say that every puppet does not have, uh, because we have some twisted puppet makers.
Helen Keller and who's her teammate? Um, so this sketch is so bad, we're so embarrassed that we ever made it. It actually was written and held off on and then we produced the animatic of it and never put it on the show and then eventually we were short of time and we're like, oh, I guess we put Double Dare in and, you know, <laughs> then you make bad choices. But uh, Stevie Wonder and Daredevil are on a team together, the red team, uh, Double Dare, and then it's... Uh, oh, Marley Matlin. Marley Matlin and Helen Keller on the blue team. And uh, you can imagine how the visual and audio challenges go for the first half of that sketch until the blue team has to perform physical challenges. You know, and Stevie Wonder eventually punches Daredevil in the mouth. Um, did anyone, was anyone offended by the whole physical game and zombie shotgun? You know, well, well you were offended. Well, I, I really, I was, I was cautious about that because I was such a big Kurt Bates fan and I thought uh, so many people uh, exploited his death either for their own financial gain or for their own, like, vicarious emotional gain and, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, and I just didn't want to participate in that, but it was funny. Uh, you know, it's, it's so hard. There's sometimes where a joke is just funny and you know it is and you gotta say, all right, we'll, we'll do it in as, as good a taste as possible, but if, if we can get the laugh out, it's not, it, was, it wasn't grotesque. Well. I mean, we got, we got zombies competing on American Idol. A zombie Bob Marley competing against the zombie John Lennon where Count Chocula and Frankenberry and Blueberry are the judges. I mean, it's, I don't think anyone's gonna mistake this for real life, and then all the zombies go on a shooting rampage, and Bing Rams is in there shooting zombies, and Kurt Cobain comes and takes the shotgun from Bing Rams and kills himself. You know, that's what happened. <laughs> Without the Bing Rams and the zombies, that's exactly what happened. Uh, any plans for like a uh, spin off sort of show, not just sketch, but maybe the same sort of style? But just uh, oh, that it's it's almost like we planted you in the audience because uh, yesterday we premiered uh, the new show from all the same people called Titan Maximum, which is uh, you guys see it? It's it's more like uh, Venture Brothers in that it's uh, a longer form uh, storytelling show with regular characters and a uh, consistent storyline. And it's going to be on Comedy Channel here starting in January. Right on. Dress them and then we hurt each other. It's pretty much If you go to uh, plasticearth.com, you can actually get a uh, sculpt of your head made, I believe. But I don't think it takes five days. I think it's a, a lot longer for the average consumer. What's up? Hi. Me, I'm so excited. I got, honestly, I've been waiting all weekend. All right, all right. Let's. That's true. I'm going to be on our road tonight. Wait. Wait. Can I give a shout out on road? To Mandela, Angela, and Shannon. She said, please. No pressure. Uh, maybe? Wait, we should write that down. Which one are you? Angela, and you're Shannon. All right, Shannon, stand up. So everyone sees who I'm shouting out tonight on the road. I'll do my best. We should totally write that down. Wait, do you have a pen? Wait, do you have a pen? Does anybody have a pen? Can I borrow? Does anybody have a Sharpie? That's my guy. Awesome, man, thanks. He's gonna write it. We'll listen. I lost my
time you guys tell me I'm not a good actor. <laughs> I'm gonna remind you that Angela knows a lot. Thank you. Wait, uh, two N's on Shannon? O-N or E-N? E-N?
brilliantly iconic and kind of got off the rails as it became more commercial. You know, as soon as you've got little kids in like Freddy toothbrushes, it's just, it's not really all that scary. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Sweet tea, lady. Separately, but then I got to direct your words uh, for his I video. I always like this story because it was my first interaction with George Lucas, not Seth. And uh, I got to meet him a couple of times, but I, you know, I never in that. So the, the 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 closest thing to that dynamic, I got to interview him uh, walking around the Star Wars archives for MTV when uh, Revenge of the Sith came out, which was an amazing thing. But I, I kind of forced myself to be. Um, inquisitive and journalistic as opposed to fanboys who are walking around like touching the Millennium Falcon. Um, I just want to ask, oh, well, I mean, as a filmmaker, you don't have a CG influence, but then, uh, you know, I'm trying to ask him important questions. And he just kept messing with me, like nonstop messing with me. The second I got there, he puts the Darth Vader helmet on my head, which is twice the size of my head. And he puts me into, well, first he puts the thing on my head and I, I say to him, oh, you're making me look like Rick Moranis, don't do this, there's cameras everywhere. And then he uh, puts me, there's a Chewbacca, and he puts me under his arms. So now, I, and I said, oh, it's like our prom photo, everyone take a picture. Chewbacca embracing me lovingly. And uh, that made him laugh, and I was like, all right, okay, so you're funny, that's how, you, that's how, we, that's how I'm gonna have to deal with you. And so then we got to go to Skywalker again to um, direct him for that, for that sketch. And then, how did it go? Why don't you tell it from your perspective? My first words out of his mouth when he got up there, he's like, he's looking over the script. He doesn't even really say hello. He's like, well, I guess I'm just going to be the asshole actor today. And Seth goes, that's all right. I'm and he says, as long as you don't mind me being the prick director, we're square. And then <laughs> my introduction to him, I realized, all right, this, this guy is just, he's got a wicked sense of humor. He's a sarcastic son of a bitch, and we love him for it. I mean, he, and, loves and he, sci -fi. Loves yeah. he loves sci fi and history and archaeology and adventure. He's just like a, a dude that, like, that got to make stuff that he thought of, you know? Backwards gate, the kid in front of me decided he wanted to fall, and 
that made for a very bad day. Yeah, backward skate was a bad idea. You should only call out things that you know how to do. But we're thinking, we're, I mean, like, if, if we're trying to judge the success of that whole operation and see if we couldn't do something like that internationally. It was, it was a great time. It's just a very expensive thing to produce, and it's hard to make money at the actual event. We do it as a free party. Like, anybody that bought the DVD got into this thing, and, you know, it was fun. I'm really enthusiastic. Maybe I should just scrap those plans. Now, would you guys want a skate party in here? Skate party! Okay. You know what's so funny? Um, the, the questions about Fallout Boy and we ever have Pete on the show. Um, I like those guys a lot. They're really just super Silly awesome. Enough, Pete actually did a promo for the skate party for us. Wait, this is brilliant. Um, Pete's so indulging. I, I'm like, yo, man, can I get a shot of you on video just talking about what happened to you? And for, for the promos, we did um, uh, testimonials, celebrities talking about, you know, the horror show that happened when the skate party came to their town, and also offering survival tips, like ways that you can survive when Robot Chicken comes to your town. And uh, I, I show up at Pete's house, and I'm like, what do you want to do? And he's like, what do, you, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I don't know. Do you want to be weird? Do you want to be funny? He's like, I have a chair made of stuffed animals. Maybe I can sit in it. Yes, please. How do you have a chair made of stuffed animals? And he's like, ah, I am a, I'm a, I mean, I have a rock star. You wind up with a chair made of stuffed animals. So he's sitting in a chair made of stuffed animals in a row, just like opened ever so slightly on his knee, wearing the biggest wraparound shades with a snifter of alcohol with a life-size R2-D2 that he had already in his home. And then he sat there and discussed the horrors of Robot Chicken coming to his town. I'm so maybe. I like those guys, they're really, uh, uh, we, did a, we did an improv bit in uh, uh, the end of Sex Drive. And they're all, oh you did? Oh, then you guys are like part of 10 people that went and saw the movie in the theaters. I got two quid if you feel. I mean, I thought the movie was awesome. Satisfied? I think I got totally off topic, but yeah, they're all really good actors, um, and we should probably have a little Okay. <laughs> but that would make us have, have to do like a follow up sketch. Yeah, I was going to say we have We might bring them on, but I'd, I'd want them to do something else. We always like to bring people on and have them do something uh, totally different. They usually have on that one. Oh yeah, you got his video too. Provide any kind of 
credible celebrity anyway. I think all it is is it just provides like an intermediate thing to get fascinated on the magazines. Do you know? I don't really think that. Um, I yeah, Kelly Clarkson. I mean, the people that compete in talent contests where they're being pit against other talented people for a potential uh, recording prize, something like that. That's that's a different kind of thing. But I'm talking about. I wouldn't go on um, uh, real world road rules in an effort to in an effort to be known as a voiceover actor. Do you know? Yeah, that's actually something we can ask a lot. We, um, I don't know, it was, it, we, we love 
love getting to make something so concentrated on one brand, you know? Um, and Star Trek is, uh, Star Trek, one of the, Star Wars is one of those universes because there's so many characters and so many different stories and so many interpretations of each of those characters' personalities. It just gives us so much room. I think we're gonna get away from the Star Trek. Probably one, probably not one. But there's, with all the iterations of Star Trek, would you want to concentrate on any one thing or would you just work around? I'd want it wide open. I mean, you have to hit everything, like even, even the, the JJ one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Lord of the Rings probably too. Uh, but I think you really need like a, a big wide universe to pick stuff from. Or... Let's be honest, guys. We need to leave Australia with a box set of Stargate and just get started. I need to watch that show. Like I said, we'll pick up a box set. I think we've got enough time to watch it on the plane. <laughs> I'm going to have a question about this. Did you make that jacket? <laughs> Your friend is very cool. She's very talented. I want to know, what is the last point of the bad guy in the season episode? That's it. You can... I think bad guy is kind of a wrong impression. <laughs> Every, every villain has their own, thinks that they're the hero of their own story. I and, like that. Yeah, the Matt character thinks he's doing the right I thing. I am doing the right thing and saving us all. Um, you know, I think our characters have all turned into very specific types of people. Um, on our show, uh, Seth, we like to say, is the corporate chill personality. I'm the razzle-dazzle man. Uh, Tom uh, likes to punch things, uh, especially like babies. That happened once in one episode. <laughs> I mean, Tom is more the, the very calm, you know, sort of, just uh, ocean-like character. Yeah, they, they always animate me with my head like this. Well, I guess I walk that way. I never know. Our other head writer, Doug, we always make the uh, slightly perverted guy. We had uh, the season opener, was it two? Yeah. Se season opener of two? Oh, or was it uh, three? Is that the Zach song? Is it oh. two? <laughs> yeah. That was three. Three, right? So there's a sketch where a guy is just playing Zack Snyder. He's like, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, damn it. And he walks away, and then the back of the Zack Snyder opens. You see the joystick dip out of view, and then the back of the Zack Snyder opens, and a, a, like an employee sits up his fly and says, ah, thank you, Zack Snyder. Hello, Sidney. And the head on that toy is done. Yeah. And I just like to shoot things. Uh, why did you guys make that? Pretty much. Um, I mean, less bored than lazy. Yeah, it all started, uh, Seth uh, didn't want to do an interview and thought it'd be cooler to actually bring a little animated short on. And somehow thought it would be easier. And uh, we realized that we dug ourselves into a hole and had to actually make something. Not just make it, but pay for it. And next thing you know, we were uh, doing a bunch of webisodes back in 2000 for Sony's website that uh, turned it was, into a I mean, it was really a little ass backwards. We, we set out to figure out how to make a stop motion piece. And because of all the animation companies we were soliciting, we got approached by uh, Sony, which was trying to develop linear content, sort of like a YouTube or any of the portal sites that are on right now, like Hulu, except it was uh, creator-generated content, so they were hiring people to make shows that people were supposed to watch online, except this was pre-broadband, so nobody could see anything. They would just try and dial up and... To watch video and dial up was almost impossible, or it is impossible. So we uh, took all those that they made, they paid for 12, thank you, Sony, and uh, we uh, shopped that around to everything from Saturday Night Live to uh, Spike. And uh, we eventually, the Adult Swim was getting developed to a degree that they were paying for that kind of programming, and we could not be happier. It's a perfect home for us. And thank goodness it's only 15 minutes long. Another question is, uh, can I call up there and get a help? If you stay on the floor, and we stay on the platform, and one of us has a firm hold of either of our belts at all times, then yes. Another anonymous hug.
We switched. Drop the water. Morning, Do you want me to take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. All right, this is you asking your question. Close, close, close. Something really hard. Uh, Chase, for a while, the guy you run down Yes. How um, did you enjoy it? WWE was no joke, one of the greatest nights of my life. Uh, childhood fan, got to get in that ring and bounce around and uh, fight with other dudes. I got to break up a three count. Um, I got to make a pin attempt. Um, I, got, I got to punch a guy in the face. <laughs> the Big Show almost fell on you? The Big Show almost fell on me. And then in a match that wasn't seen, uh, on air, but was like performed live. Uh, I, like me and Cena Triple H guy, screamed at my big show. That was a horror show. He's huge, that guy. Are you a fan? Right on, Matthew, too. The big shows. Your shutter speed is slow. <laughs> this is really blurry. <laughs> He's videotaping you, by the way. <laughs> you changed all your shutter speed. <laughs> Perfect. It's going to look very impressionistic. <laughs>
love that game. I think Final Fantasy VII and VIII were some of the best games of all time. Uh, I think Final Fantasy VII is the best game of all time. No, I will say Final Fantasy VIII is the best game of all time. I really do play VIII because VII is so good. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to find a way into that universe. Uh, the way that it's kind of good and it's awesome. Kind of like what we're doing with the Titan Max. Otherwise, there's cards there. You don't have to bring anything. If you've got DVDs, you can bring them as well. 